Hello everyone and welcome to a Fatback 4 Daily Special. Um, throughout the summer we were all going on about transfer windows, players coming in, players leaving, rumours. Um, lots of people had rumours, Lots. Of, some people didn't, some believed them, some didn't. Um, ultimately it ended with Liverpool um, making two signings, Harvey Elliott, um, which will go to a tribunal, and Sepp van den Berg, who was signed for around £1.3 million, rising to a possible £4.2 million. Um, throughout the summer, I was doing shows on uh, YouTube, I was doing them on Periscope, I was making them available to download, <clears throat> and one person that came across, I came across during this time was a man named Avi Hanser. Avi Hanser uh, was constantly on a YouTube feed telling us that uh, Bruno Fernandes would be a signing for Liverpool before the transfer window ended. This ran right at the end of the transfer window. Bruno Fernandes did not happen, and I decided, you know what? I'm going to give Abby Hunter is a right to reply is probably the wrong way to put it, but I'm going to give him 20 minutes and we're going to have a little chat about it, and he can give his side of the story, and we can have a little chat about Liverpool while we're on while we're going along. Abby, you are extremely welcome to this show. Um, how are you, first of all? Thank you, Gav. Thank you, Gav. Um, it's a pleasure to be on the show. Um, I'm good. I'm good. Just enjoying the Californian weather, and um, yeah, I'm pleased to be on the show. Yeah, we were having a little chat before we come on, and we were saying that um, you're originally from London. That's right, from the Berkshire area. Um, I was there for the best part of 32 years of my life before I made the move over here um, in March 2018. Okay, and uh, we were saying beforehand that your first game, you believe, was the 12th of February 1996, a 2-1 win away to QPR, is that right? Yep, first game at the school end at Loftus Road, 2-1 Liverpool. It was um, Mark Wright and Robbie Fowler who scored, and then uh, a young Kevin Gallen at the time for QPR. Okay. Um, so go for them, yeah. All right. So a long time support in Liverpool. Um, while living in London, would you get to see a lot of Liverpool when they came down to play in London? Would you go to Anfield a lot? I used to get hospitality tickets at um, the Emirates. So I've seen them a few times at the Emirates. The last game was that 3-3 three, three, uh, thriller. Um, uh, Liverpool, um, Arsenal. Then uh, when there was, uh, we went 1-0 up and then they had scored two and then they had scored a third and then we made a comeback with Firmino and I believe the third... I Forgot who scored the third, but um, I think it was Firmino who scored the third. I think we went two one up, and then they had scored. I think two, we were, I think we were two nil up, and I two think, up. I think yeah. they went three two up, and I think Firmino hit. Was it a shot that kind of looped over the keeper? If I remember right. Yep, that, that's the one that went over a check. Yeah, I think it was Christmas. Check-in. Christmas two thousand and seventeen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was, was in it? December. Right, right. It yeah. Was, you were wearing the orange kit. I remember us wearing the orange kit. Yeah, I think, I think it was Christmas 2017 because I think I finished a walk for Christmas that day. So I think yeah. that's how I remember it. I'm, I'm kind of strange at remembering things like that. So, yeah. But um, no, look, as I've as I done in the intro, Abby, um, I did say that, you know, people accused me, not accused me, but kind, but kind of told me during the summer, you know this guy, this is a setup, this is, this is, you know, this is you doing this for... Or publicity and I was like I'm getting no publicity out of this this is a YouTube this is a guy on YouTube making comments with regards to Bruno Fernandez and I'm going with it and I'm not taking it too seriously but at the same time I always did say if this is your opinion and you're sticking to it I will absolutely respect it till the day it is proven different um but uh, before we get on to Bruno Fernandez I suppose what did you expect in the summer from Liverpool did you expect big spending did you expect to, to make a splash in the transfer market, a lot of people thought we're in a position of power here. We should really throw our weight around. What did you expect going into the, into the transfer window? So, Gab, I've uh, I, I was given a few names um, to watch out for. I thought I definitely didn't think that we would stand still like we did this summer to an extent. I mean, yeah, we got in a young sixteen-year-old with full, you know a young potential world-class player in Harvey Elliott. Great technique, got a good left foot on him. Sepp van der Berg, can't say that I knew anything about the lad. And then, obviously, Adrian came much later on after Alisson's, um, well, before Alisson's injury, but it was a late signing because of uh, Minolet. I thought we wouldn't stand still. I thought we would get, you know, two big players in. Um, one of them, obviously, Bruno Fernandes. And the other one, you know, it was anyone's guess. I know there was a lot of talk of uh, Nicholas Pep 
coming in from Lille. I know we liked Jaden Sancho. I also know, um, I have spoken to Grizz about this, that we did have conversations with Dortmund in December 2018 about um, Jaden Malik Sancho. Um, but that, that was obviously for the summer of 2020. Um, but some told me that we might be even pushing for him this summer. So I thought we'd definitely get two big players. And I thought, you know, we won't stand still. We will consolidate on the power that we have right now, which is the European champions, the clock pull. But it wasn't to be. Um, no biggie. We march on. We've got a team that's, uh, you know, it's still glued together. Um, we've got our core players. No one's left. So, you know, I still I still have uh, great expectations of this season. Yeah, me too. Listen, I, I've, I've said for, for quite a while that, you know, the, the City squad, um, I always put it to the City squad because you always should compare yourself to the best when it comes to the league. And they are the best in the league. The, the table doesn't lie and all that sort of stuff. But what I will say is, and I've said it continuously, and I, I, I won't be swayed on this, the City squad was lauded last season as amazing the best that the, the league's ever seen you know the, the strength and depth was, was spoken about continuously week on week day by day week by week month month by month it never ever stopped and i've made the point to a lot of people and, and some agree and some don't that the point i'm trying to make is is that yes i've no i'm not going to argue the strength of man city squad but liverpool squad has been i think being spoke talk talked down a little bit and when you look at it there was one point in it at the 38 league games between these this respective squads and we went and won a European Cup and they didn't. So, although I will admit that the City squad is outstanding, I think Liverpool is not given as much credit as it should. You know, people pointed to Kevin De Bruyne being out for large parts of last season and he's integral to them. Listen, after 12, 13 games of the league season last year, Joe Gomez was integral to us. He was absolutely huge for us because Lovren was gone. Lovren had issues after the World Cup with a stomach injury that he did not declare to the, to the team. Um, Matip was known for being flaky when it came to uh, you know, his, his, his injury record. So Gomez was becoming integral to us. You know, um, Naby Keita was out for a little bits and pieces. You know, we lost Firmino towards the end of the season for a little stretch. So I think the squad is not given enough credit um, that it should be. But going into this season, I, I've, I've high expectations like you. I think that I think the squad that we have in place, providing we, we keep it fit and, and and you know on an even keel, I, I I'm tipping us for the league already. Um, am I being a bit? Am I going a bit over the top of that, Avi? Or would you agree? Do you think do you think there's a league win in this in this squad? There's definitely a league win. In this squad, I mean, we missed out. Uh, we missed out what on, on a point last season. Um, mm -hmm. it, we took it to the last day. I mean, for the best part of what forty four seconds, eighty four seconds, we were top of the league. Uh, going, in, you know, in, on the last day. Yeah. Um, I think what it is like, we forget that Fabinho took two to three months to get to get used to the Premiership. Mm -hmm. This, we forget that Ox was out for the year. Yeah. We forget that it's Naby's first season. Naby's 23, and there's so much to come from the lad. Um, I've, I've spoken to a few Germans that I work with, and they're big, big um, German supporters. Um, and they said this guy was, you know, he was absolutely integral part of the Leipzig team um, two years back. He was the he was the German midfielder of the year, um, and you know, it took him the best part of what I, th I thought we saw the best of him after say between late February up until that injury that he had. Mm -hmm. um, I thought he was great against Chelsea in that two nil win um, and against Southampton away when he got the header um, against Porto in the champions league at home. He, he was starting to turn it on the Bayern game at home. I thought he played well, even though it was a nil nil. So we had players that, you know, had to integrate into the team, the way we play, um, and, you know, we go back, if you look at Spurs last season, they didn't spend anything on, you know, they didn't spend anything. And they probably had one of the finest seasons that I can remember. You know, they came, OK, third in the league, but they got to the Champions League final. Those performances against Ajax, um, the Man City performances, and they didn't they didn't buy anyone. You know, yeah. uh, they kept it together. And sometimes continuity, sometimes keeping the team together means more about bringing, you know, fresh faces in. But it would have been nice to... Have one or two in just for cover. Uh, definitely, you know, for left back or a right back. Um, I know there's big hopes on Kiana Hoover, who's a big, big talent. But maybe another left back would have been, you know, a nice little acquisition just to keep the current players on their toes too, you know. Um, and another player for the front three, um, as mentioned, Nicholas Pep or 
a Bruno Fernandes who could have slipped into a midfield or a front three too. Yeah, it, it's just, I think people like shiny new things. And I think if we'd have made, even if we'd have made a left back signing, like you said, if we'd have went out and say, for argument's sake, let me pick a name, Danny Rose. Danny Rose was, was, was rumoured to be on his way out of Spurs. I think Watford made a bid that was rejected. And the talk was that he was going to leave. Now, we, I think he started both of Spurs' first two league games, which in my opinion is correct. He's the best left back. But if we decide, say, Danny Rose, or even a Sessegnon, or pick a left back, I suppose, I think people would have went into the season going, yeah, we are a bit short there, and we've done the business. And up front, okay, we might have needed one more, but, but we've enough, and, we, we, you know, I think they would have been okay with it. It's just that lack of player that you see going in and, and threatening the fourth team squad that people are getting a little bit jumpy about. Um, and listen, that's completely okay. You know, I've, I've made me point on this squad and with a few caveats around the injuries and stuff like that and everyone's entitled to their opinion the show i do is all about people giving their opinions day in day out i will never knock somebody's opinion i will never tell them they're wrong i'm i'd never stand here and say i'm better than you because it's simply not true i'm a guy from dublin that supports liverpool and likes talking to other liverpool fans that's just the way it goes you know um but look i i think both of us are in agreement that this season can be a special season again last season was was brilliant the title running although it ended in in in, you know it was a bit of heartbreak at the end of it we had the european cup that we went to and we won we've won a european super cup and i think liverpool can can realistically look at at another league title show and a champions league show as well so listen you can't get much better than that you really can't we're going to move on to the topic that everyone spoke about throughout the summer and it was the player that kind of dominated our minds throughout the summer you know, there was a lot of talk around it. Was there Coutinho? There was Cabios. There was Asensio. There was there was Firpo at Real Betis. But the name that was constant throughout it was Bruno Fernandez. Now, Bruno Fernandez was linked with a lot of clubs. Um, Liverpool at one stage were ten to one on in the in the uh, in the betting odds to 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 get Bruno Fernandez. Manchester United then ended up being about ten to one on. Um, he was linked to Arsenal. He was linked to Spurs, and eventually he went nowhere. Um. But Avi, you come on to my show, um, you were, when you appeared on my show, I'd say about, would I, would I be right in saying about three weeks before the window ended? Y- yeah, but uh, I would say, um, yeah, three to four weeks uh, prior, yeah. Yeah, so, and I can tell you, I don't know you, and I've never spoken to you until, until tonight, okay? So, what, what I, the first question I'm going to ask you is, what possessed you, I suppose, to to go on and go? Do you know what? I'm going to put that name in there and I'm going to stick by it. And if no matter what, I'm sticking by it. What 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 made you do that? Because a lot of people would throw a name in there and just say, "Oh, I really like him," and leave it at that. But you were so adamant on this. Yeah, I was. I, I was really adamant. So um, I get snippets of uh, football news here and there. I get snippets of transfer news. I never, I never tweet it out. I never use Twitter as a platform to gain followers. It was more that I, you know, I, I talked to my friends on WhatsApp and we just communicate on there. Hmm. Bruno Fernandes was a name that, so we've done, a, so I work for a law firm, a, you know, we've done work for his agent, Miguel Pina, mm-hmm. and his representatives. Um, they do some work out in New York. I was told that Bruno Fernandes was a player that Liverpool liked and we were close to agreeing a deal with Sporting Lisbon. The player had declared his... I don't know what you can say, his love for Liverpool, and he, he's had, he has already spoken to Klopp. He loves the structure, the model that we've got set up, and we wanted him, he wanted Liverpool, um, and that was that. I was then told that, and this was without me asking further questions about the link, I was then told that on the 25th of July, when we had the friendly against uh, Lisbon in America, that we would actually... Um, confirm the deal uh, a day after the game okay um, and I, I started to believe it more and more because i we knew that rafa camacho had gone to sporting um not that it had anything to do with that deal directly but maybe it was a sweetener i was then told yeah after the friendly that we would announce the bruno fernandez deal and gab uh, I, I went on the show and um during uh the evenings and i would Right, Bruno Fernandes to be done on the twenty fifth or the day after, and I was adamant on that. That was that was what I was told. And the person that gave me this information, he's not one. He's not, he's not, 
he still calls football soccer because he's American. So um, he's uh, he's not the biggest uh, soccer fans, but he said to me, look, these what th- their people are telling us that Bruno Fernandes will be a Liverpool player this summer, the summer of 2019. Um, and they believe that there's a friendly game with Liverpool. And I said, yeah, that's correct. And I said, it's on the 25th. They said a day after or 48 hours within that time, we will confirm that we've agreed a fee with Sporting Lisbon and subject to a medical and all the paperwork that needs to be completed for this deal to happen. Obviously, the deal didn't happen then. I was still told that, look, it's still in its final stages. Um, There is no hiccup. Um, Obviously, got down to the last week of the transfer window. I was still being told that Bruno Fernandes will be a Liverpool player. Meanwhile, we're hearing um, certain journalists out on uh, Twitter saying that he's talking to Spurs and that Man United want him and whatnot. Um, there was no truth in that. There might have been truth that United were linked with him and they liked the player, but the player had already confirmed to his agent that he wanted Liverpool. End of. Okay. Um, I think what happened also, um, the week leading up to Bruno Fernandes and the summer window closing, they had gotten George Mendes, uh, a super agent who was involved, I believe, in the Fabinho deal too. Even though I don't think he represents Fabinho fully, but he was involved in the Fabinho deal in some capacity um, when he joined Liverpool. Okay. Um, so maybe he was there to, I don't know, quicken up the process or be a deal breaker between Sporting and Liverpool. I, 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 I'd be second guessing if I told you what that was. Okay. Um, and then even up until the last, what, 48 hours, 24 hours, I was told that, look, there's nothing to worry about. We still believe that, you know, that Bruno Fernandes will be a Liverpool player this summer. Okay. And unfortunately, no, it didn't happen. And um, he didn't go anywhere else either, which was, you know, strange to me because a lot of journalists were adamant that, oh, Spurs are in for him. Spurs were never going to get him. Was, you know, I always ask this question to um, my other friends. Where were, where were, where were Spurs going to um, play Fernandes? They've got Ericsson, you know, they've got Ali. They've got Giovanni Lo Celso who's coming from Betis. Um, and Bele could play in a forward uh, role. I don't know where they were thinking of putting Bruno Fernandes. And with United, that was a no-go because he didn't want to play for a club that's not in the Champions League. Um, and, yeah, th- that's all I have, uh, Gav. I, and even even now, I'm still adamant that Bruno Fernandes will be a Liverpool player, whether it's uh, in January or whether it's in the summer of 2020. You see, my feelings on it was is that, look, as, I, as I've said to you before, I've said to you directly through messaging, and, and I've said it on the show while you've been on and while everybody else has been watching, if, I, if someone has an opinion and, and they're sticking to it, I'm, not, I'm, not, I'm nobody to tell you that, that that's right, right or wrong or halfway right or halfway wrong. It's, it's, it, I just am not It's just the way it is. Um, but you make some decent points there with regards to especially sports. And United, because if United wanted that player and the player wanted United, that deal would have been done. Because Manchester United, despite being in and out of the Champions League over the last couple of seasons, um, won't be in it this season um, because of their finish last, you know, sixth, I think it was last season. Manchester United make more money than any club around simply because 25 or so years ago they put themselves in a in a space in a commercial space that no one else was willing to go into and they fill that big hole all on their own for a very long time they're a money making machine and their 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 turnover and their income is just monumental um even if they're losing money on the on the adidas deal because they're, they haven't qualified for for champions league it doesn't really matter because of the size of the club liverpool are a bit like that as well liverpool generate a hell of a lot of money but are are probably still catching up commercially with Manchester United simply because they stood still in the mid nineties. Um, but when it comes to sports, the thing I see, him, so it would have happened to United if that player wanted to go there. They would have made it happen. Money was no issue. So you would probably be right to believe that now the player just didn't want to go there. Um, I Arsenal links were there and and stuff like that, which I didn't believe. Man City were never even in the conversation. The other one was Spores, and apparently Spores had travelled to Lisbon. Um, had agreed all the deal with Fernandez and were about 10 million short of the valuation. That one didn't wash with me because sports don't travel to Lisbon without knowing the valuation, you know, or, or or even if they know the valuation and they're not willing to go that high, they still travel and say, listen, we're a little bit short of that. Can we do a deal? So, but I'd, I'd, I'd kind of side with you on that, that the Liverpool thing 
but could have been most likely. Could have been most likely. The big thing for me is that he never went anywhere. That is a, that is very very telling that he didn't want to go anywhere. And for me, that tells me that it, it says to me that this player had got his heart set on a club, be it Liverpool or be it anybody else. He had it set on this club, and he wasn't willing to to I suppose you know sway in any way and got and you know and he could have broke to financial pressure from Sport and Lisbon to see it as a great deal or, or his agent to tell him it's a great deal. He didn't move from that stance, you know, and he never went. So there could be something in that but you're you're still of the opinion that Bruno Fernandez will be a Liverpool player, be it January and be it or be it next May, June, July, whatever whenever the window opens. Um is there is there a, a reason for that? Is there any information you've been told that tells you this, or is it just your gut instinct that this player wants this club and you know Sport and Lisbon just wouldn't play ball, but they will have to eventually? I think that's more of a um, personal instinct that I think we'll we'll we'll, we'll go in for him. I, I know that we we're not big fans of doing business in um, January. Um, mm -hmm. Apart from that one. Crazy January that we had when we sold um, Fernando uh, Torres and then we brought in Lewis and um, Andy Carroll and yeah. um, I think it's the only last sort of January window I can remember. Or oh, well, maybe the Coutinho and Sturridge one yeah. under yeah. Brendan. Um, that's the only one. 2012. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I think that's the only recollection I have of us doing any business in January. Mm -hmm. um, so maybe, um, maybe not January, but in the summer, definitely. I mean, the player, I can. I, I trust uh, the person that gave me the information. I trust him wholeheartedly. And again, like I said, he's not a big uh, soccer fan, um, as he likes to call it. He, he All he said was, this player um, wants to go to your club that you support, which is obviously a football club. And then he told me a little bit of snippets here and there. He would email me and saying, look, this is it's coming to the final stages. And he goes, obviously, I'm not going to keep pestering um, his representatives, but look, I can only give you what I'm getting. Mm -hmm. I said, no, I appreciate it. And that's it. That was the one name that I was putting out on Twitter um, all summer. I had a few other names too. Um, like I said, with Sancho, there's talk of 2020 that we want Sancho. But then, you know, that we're running the risk of, you know, who says that we're the only club in for Jaden Sancho? We're not going to be the only club in for Jaden Sancho. You know, Man City have some kind of complex buyback deal on him. Real Madrid want to make him the next British star um, for Madrid uh, for them for themselves, like they've done previously with. You know Beckham, the Michael Owens, even the Jordan, um, Jonathan Woodgates, um, Bales. Yeah. They want Jaden Sancho really badly too um, next summer. So and they can, you know, they'll they'll pay him whatever it takes to get Sancho to um, Madrid. Madrid. Yeah. Yeah, of course. And Bruno Fernandez was the name that I was given, and Bruno Fernandez is the name that I stick by, Gav. Um, whether I die on that name or not, by the, whether I live by that name, I I, I can. Um, you know, I'm adamant that this deal still happens. Yeah. Well, to be honest with you, you, you did message me just after the window closed on the 8th of August. And you messaged me and said, it looks like I, I was wrong. Um, I, I'm willing to, I'm still willing to stand by what I said. And, you know, and you came out and you said, look, whatever needs to be said, needs to be said. And I did turn around and say, no, 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 don't say anything. I, I'll let you say your piece. I wouldn't just throw it out there. And we have had a lot of viewers ask where are you and how are things and stuff like that. So, and I have told them on, on the show tonight that I will be doing an interview with you tonight and I will be releasing it um, probably Tuesday morning. Um, yeah, Tuesday morning on YouTube for people to watch this, listen to what you've said and listen, just, you, you've, you've, I've asked you questions and you've answered them, which is perfectly fine, you know. Um, but look, I, I, if if it comes down to when Bruno Fernandez signs in January or signs in July or goes somewhere else, that'll be the next chapter in in the Bruno Fernandez story for the player and and for um for me and you I suppose. But it's been really good to talk to you, Abby. Um, I'd love to have you on again. Um, we we if you're ever around and you're free when we're doing the Fat Back Four Daily and we're doing it live, um, if you want to come on, by all means you can come on and have a chat with us. And uh, it won't be about Bruno Fernandez. Sometimes it's about football and sometimes it's about chocolate that you like. That's just how random the show is. But listen, Abby, it's been a pleasure. I'd like to thank you for joining me. Um, likewise, and I'll, likewise. and I'll, I'll I'll talk to you soon. Fantastic. Likewise, thank you, Gav. No problem at all, Abby. Uh, yeah, that's been the Fatback 4 Daily Special. Um, it's been myself. It's been Abby. I hope you enjoyed it. Um, talk to you soon. Over now.